Hey guys, welcome to the False Nine Podcast here with Alvaro, your host. Episode 209, we had UFC 302 this past weekend. And to be fairly honest, it wasn't the, the very best, the most entertaining card, you could say. I didn't really watch the I didn't really watch any of the fights till co-main and then the main event. And uh, even the co-main kind of disappointed. So we'll get into all that. And uh, but just want to say that the card wasn't it. Um, you know, just not a lot of action, not a lot of big names. But like I said, the main event was fire. And uh, that's really kind of what the event or the, the card felt like it was for. So I'm going to start off talking about Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. Um, for, I mean, I was very, very disappointed with Sean's performance. Um, I relate this one to the Drakeus performance uh, because I, I thought that Drakeus, I mean, I thought Sean Strickland beat Drakeus Duplices in that fight, but he also started off very, very slow. It seems like he was a bit cautious. He never really stepped on the on the gas to get after Drakeus. And on this one, the same thing, you know, with Paulo, it, it seemed, he was doing really, really good countering and landing, being the pressure fighter, walking him down. But never just let go, right? And just put it on Paulo. And there were small moments, and he had success in those small moments to put it on Paulo. But for some reason, just didn't do it. And that was just really upsetting to see from Sean Strickland because... Um, I was like, okay, this is the fight that, you know, you should win and then you get your title shot next, but like show to the fans, show to the UFC, show to everybody that you deserve your title shot because you just completely ran through Paulo Costa. You made him look like, uh, like a chump, but Sean didn't do that. He, he let Paulo Costa in the fight. He let Paulo Costa have moments. And, and the reality is that, you know, Sean Strickland could have put away Paulo Costa. And then for Paulo Costa, too, not letting his hands go and not letting just lose on Sean Strickland. Like, fuck it, right? If he wants to get back on, back on top, like, let's fucking go. Sean Strickland was never really being much of a threat to, to Paulo, like, where he's going to knock him out or just put his lights out. But, you know, just getting caught, right? Like, Paulo obviously was going to get caught, things like that. But Paulo Costa could have put let loose as well, and he didn't do it. And, um... Both fighters just seem too timid or, or, or just worried about, uh, like, I don't know, letting loose. I don't know, right? It was very disappointing, like I said. I thought this was, like, a more a title eliminator type of fight. I was like, okay, if someone does real, real well, like, if Paulo just knocks out Sean Strickland, give him a title shot. For Sean Strickland, all you got to do, give him his title shot, no questions, right? So... Yeah, it, it was a it was a good performance overall from Sean, but like I said, it was a bit boring. Paulo Costa didn't help. He kept pushing back, pushing back, getting out the way, moving around too much every time Sean wanted to go forward. So I understand Sean Strickland's uh, frustration, but just cut off the octagon and let loose, bro. Just let fucking loose. And uh, that's what I was just hoping for, and we didn't see it. So that was the only downside, and that's why I thought the fight was a bit boring. And my girl was like, well, Sean's winning, Sean's winning. I'm like, yeah, Sean's winning the fight. But who are you gonna? Who do you rather give the title to? The guy who just barely beat Paulo Costa in a, in a snooze fest, or Israel Adesanya, right? And I'm not even gonna say the Israel Adesanya that knocked out Paulo because that was years ago. But just Israel Adesanya, who would you rather see, Drakus or Izzy, or Drakus and Sean? Most people can say what they want, but we're gonna we're gonna say or what's gonna get more views and more buys is gonna be Israel Adesanya versus Sean versus uh, Drakus Duplices. That's what like the people are gonna ask for. And that and that's what people are going to want to buy and pay for to watch, not not this weak performance from Sean and and then we get Drakus again. Like no one's, it's going to be a good fight, but the hype is not going to be there. And uh, you know the UFC is a business and they got to sell pay per views. And Israel Adesanya to me is a front runner right now. I know that he's not. His last fight was against Sean and he lost the title. I understand that, but Israel Adesanya, you know, he has a legacy in the division and. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think it's okay with giving him a title shot, but that that's what was on the line for me for Sean Strickland. I was like, bro, you need a really, really good performance to get the shot against Drakus. That's what you need to do. And uh, it just felt like it wasn't there, bro. And uh, I was just like, gosh, man, like I want to see that that just like just piece up Paulo, bro. That's what I wanted to see. Piece him up, land the jabs, and put some good combinations together. And uh, you know, I don't know, man. And and Sean has the cardio. Sean Sean has the hands. He has all the tools to do it. And for some reason, he just didn't do it. And for Paulo, again, poor performance. He he came out and apologized and said fuck the judges and things like that. I don't understand why he was thinking about the judges. I was like. Just just walk down Sean Strickland if you can. Do your very best, bro. You're ranked number seven. If you win this fight and you leave a really, really good performance, 
You could be a contender for Drakus. Now, if you beat Sean Strickland by points, maybe you got to get another win, things like that. But Paulo Costa seems to fall short against these big names. I'm like, bro, if you're trying to break through, let fucking loose. You got to risk more to earn more. It's that simple. Uh, I mean, I'm not a fighter, but the, the way I see it and from my point of view. So I expected more from both fighters. They kind of just hold it back. Sean Strickland, I feel, was like being it too safe and doesn't want to lose his title shot. And uh, Paulo Costa, I don't know what his game plan was or what he was trying to do because he was just running away the whole time. But I agree with Sean. Sean took the fight. He didn't have to. Um, and, and and if he didn't take it, he'd probably be number one or number two for the title. And after a, a win and being active, I don't know who you're going to give it to, whether it's Izzy or Sean. But Sean Strickland's next fight should be for a title because, I mean, well-deserved. And I think he's done what he's needed to do to get his title shot. So, um I mean, it it, it, well, it is what it was, but like I said, I was just very disappointed from the fight, very disappointed from Sean and Paulo, so it's just like, I guess, bro, you know what I mean? But yeah, that was that fight. Uh, Paulo Costa probably, you know, I don't know who will fight next, but he got to knock somebody out because it's just not entertaining, right? And Sean Strickland, well, we'll see what happens, and hopefully he gets his title shot, and, and if not, he'll just wait around, and, and, and he said it. He said, I'll have to wait. I'll wait if I have to. And, um, and I understand, you know, I get it, bro. Like I understand. So hopefully Sean gets a title shot soon. Doesn't take too long for that. And, uh, Paulo can bounce back and give us a good, uh, a good fight, man. Good knockout. Now our main event, I did do immediate reaction about Islam, Mike, and Dustin Poirier. And on this one, I'm just going to talk a little bit more, um, uh, probably go over some of the few, the things that I already went over in the, the YouTube video that I made. Um, but you know what, now it's uh two days since Saturday for me. Um, and you know, about the fight, I mean, it was, it was a banger, bro. Dustin Poirier versus Islam Makachev was a fucking banger and it didn't disappoint Dustin Poirier stuff in the takedowns, keeping it on the feet the most he can. Islam Makachev digging in deep, getting real creative, making adjustments throughout the fight. It was just a real high level championship fight. And, um, and like I said, you know, before and people giving me shit, that's what I wanted to see from Islam Makachev. I ain't nobody to you know, Islam Magachev doesn't have to satisfy me, right? But as a fan, in my perspective, that's just how I feel. Like, this is what I wanted to see from, from Islam. And, uh, you know, a few months ago, he, he or a year ago, he's saying, ah, oh, there's nothing else for me in the division. I need to move up, things like that. Who else can I fight? And look what happened with Dustin Poirier, bro. Look what happened. And, and that's what I'm, you know, that's my thing with Islam is that you can't count these people out because you don't know how the fight's going to go. You just can't say, oh, I'm better than everybody just because I'm I'm with Khabib's team and I beat Charles Oliveira. Like, no, bro, no. You got to fight each one individually. You got to go through a camp. You got to go through a weight cut. And look what happens when that stuff happens. You go, uh, He went through a camp. He got staff. I don't think he rehydrated as much as he always does. And he fought a good Dustin Poirier that worked on his fucking wrestling. And, you know, at that fifth round, whoever would have won that, fifth round or made it look real pretty was probably going to win the fight and that's what i'm saying bro you can't count all like dustin Poirier, the chandlers uh, possibly connor uh who else uh, justin gaethje like you can't just count our monster rookie you just can't count them all out because we don't know what's going to happen through the camp during the fight or the weight cut like we just don't know there's so many factors to a fight and you just can't Talk about there's nothing else for me in the division and I want to go to 170 and be a double champ. So how do you want to be a double champ if you haven't even beat anybody at 155 yet? And that was always my thing with Islam. Like when he beat Charles, who else did he beat? Volkanovski doesn't count because he's a 145er. Yes, he defended the title, but he's a 145er. But who else did he be? And that was always my thing. I was like, bro, you still got Dustin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Armand Sorokin. Those are three fucking names that you got to take care of in the division if you're the champion. Like, that's just what it is. Khabib did it. Charles Oliveira did it. And Islam Makachev has to do it too. And, and the new guys coming up as well that are, are like our monster rookie. And you got to defend your title and your division. You fight at 155. That's where the most of your career was. Why is it that you become champion? You want to move up. I don't understand that. And that's why I was always so mad and hated uh, the way uh, Islam spoke like about the division and, and himself. I was just like, what are you talking about, bro? You spent your whole career at 155. And as soon as you become champ with Charles Oliveira, you want to have a mega fight with Volkanovski, and now you want to go to 170? What about the rest of the guys at 155? 
And Dustin Poirier is number one on that list now, and, and he took care of Dustin Poirier. Awesome. Take care of the next guy, Armand Sarukian. And that was always my problem with Islam Agachev, bro. And it wasn't that I just hate him because of Khabib or just because he's rushed. It's nothing about that. It's just like, bro, you can't just be Charles, defend your belt against Volkanovski, and then want to fight Leon Edwards and be double champ status and think you're the greatest of all time. That's not how it works, in my opinion. Now, if Islam Akachev goes beats, you know, he already beat Dustin Poirier, all right? He's going to go beat, uh, if he beats Armand Sarukin, I don't know if Justin Gaethje gets a shot. What if he beats Justin Gaethje? What if Charles Oliveira has an amazing knockout performance and down the road, running back with Charles, possibly? If not, okay, maybe fight somebody else at 170 and then fight your title shot at 170. That legacy would be a lot bigger. And to bring up Dana White's point later on that I'm going to get into, Dana White talked about how John Jones beat everybody at light heavyweight and then beat everybody at heavyweight. That Yeah, that's goat shit. And that's what Islam Akachev needs to do. And I get it, Islam Akachev has this crazy streak in the division. But again, guys, when, when I was talking down on Islam, bro, who has he fought? Like if we look at Islam Akachev's resume, resume not counting the last three years, like who's he fought? And that's always been my thing on Islam, bro. Like, that's always been my thing on Islam. You know, but now he took care of Dustin Poirier. I miss, all right, bro, jump to the next one, bro. Jump to the next 155 or don't look no other direction because you got a list and you got people that you got to take care of. So, again, that's always been my issue with Islam, and it's nothing against about him. It's just, bro, you, you just can't be great without doing great shit. You, you just can't be get the belt and then expect to jump the line at 172 to you know, just because you know Khabib or because your name is Islam Akachev. That's just not how it works, man. That's just not how it works. But anyways, the fight, man, the fight was fire. Um, Dustin Poirier had a great-ass game plan. He came in there and ready to stuff the takedowns. He trained with uh, Gamrot. Gamrot's a really, really good wrestler. I find Gamrot a bit annoying, but he's a really, really good wrestler. I'm not going to take that away from Gamrot. And um, Dustin Poirier looked in there and he looked nice, bro. He looked really, really good against Dustin. I mean, against Islam Makachev. Islam Makachev making the adjustments when he couldn't take down Dustin Poirier. He, you know, just keep it in the clinch. And like in the fifth round, we saw he did that ankle whip. But uh, both of them came in there with really, really good game plans. And uh, I see a lot of people talking about Islam Makachev striking. I'm not even going to talk about it too much because I know after the first Volkanovski fight, um, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was like a month or whatever later, but I talked about how Islam Makachev has one of the best striking in the UFC. And from that fight, I already kind of knew Islam Makachev striking was fire. Um, and I knew that it was going to be, uh, it was, it was going to help him out against Dustin Poirier, but to be able to land certain combinations on Dustin Poirier was a bit like, wow, that's fucking badass. You know, from, from Islam Makachev, just very, very, very good, well-rounded on the ground and on the feet. And uh, it is going to be a problem for a lot of people to be able to beat a guy like that, right? And um, and his striking is, is fucking nice, bro. He looked crispy in there when he was throwing hands and, and he got caught a few times, you know. But that's what happens when you fight a good striker like Dustin Poirier. Um, both guys also said they felt like they hold it back. Dustin probably felt like he could have done more with the hands, but it was too cautious with, with the takedowns. Islam Akachev said he felt like he could have had more success with the hands, but was a bit afraid or just didn't want to engage too much because, you know, he didn't know what Dustin Poirier really had. So I thought it was pretty cool that, but they both were kind of cautious with each other and they didn't want to get, they didn't want to get caught. So, um, it was just cool to see. Right. And, uh, for, for Islam, you know, I, I talked about it in the video where the what he did in the fifth round was was crazy because if Dustin Poirier would have round that round, we don't know how the fight would have ended. We don't know who would have won. You know, like I said, I thought it, in a lot of people and probably the judges size, it was like 50-50. I thought Islam Makachev had a round over Dustin Poirier. But if Dustin Poirier probably would have had a good ass round in that fifth round, we just don't know what would have what would have happened. We really don't. So, um, um. Yeah, both guys did good. It sucks that Dustin Poirier, this was probably his last fight, and, and it ended like this, but, you know, he, he fought Khabib. A lot of people call him to go, and then he fought Charles Oliveira, which he had a fucking great-ass run as well, and then he fought Islam Makachev, who's having an amazing run now, and um, it's it's just badass to see uh, that it, it sucks for, it, for Dustin Poirier, but it's badass that his three title fights uh, has been against probably the best champions in the division like ever you know um and 
And Dustin Poirier has beat Conor McGregor as well. So he's beat a lot of really good people. He's he's fought the best in the division. Like Dustin Poirier is going to go down as one of the best. It just sucks that he couldn't get that cherry on top and couldn't get the title. And, and like I said, we don't know. I don't know. What if he becomes a backup for, for another fight, for a title fight or something like that, or somebody pulls out? Like, we just don't know what can happen, and he can have an opportunity for a fourth title fight, but it's definitely going to be a like a small chance of that happening. Um, You know, is this, is this Dustin Poirier's last fight? I like to think that it is because I don't want to see him fight anyone that's not for the title. Um, and I don't also like, I don't want to see him lose anymore. You know, he has a good career. He has won a lot and, um, he's doing good, man. He just doesn't need to do it. I know Volkanovski talked about a fight with Dustin Poirier. That seems fun. That seems pretty cool. A cool ass fight, but I also wouldn't want that for Volkanovski. I want really Volkanovski just to focus on 145. But if that fight happens, I'm not going to complain. I, I would like to see it. I find it a bit unrealistic for it to happen because how good Dustin Poirier is in the hands. I'm not underestimating Volk, but um volk just needs to get ready for Leo Taporia and um, get ready for that fight whenever he has that fight you know whether it's in a few months or in a little bit less than a year and for islam Makachev, like what's next for islam i mean there's only one person that is next for islam and that's uh our monster rookie and, uh there, he doesn't need to look no other direction our monster rookie defeated charles Oliveira, former champ number one contender he has to fight Islam Akhachev has to fight our monster rookie and there's no if ands or buts Islam Akhachev he doesn't see the point of that bro you didn't see the point of fighting Dustin Poirier and you got you look how that like turned out you say you don't see the point of our monster rookie take care of business take care of business bro just take care of business and that's it and then maybe it's Justin Gaethje I don't know right like we don't know maybe it's Conor McGregor but Islam Akhachev needs to focus at 155. There's just no room for 170. Leon Edwards has a long, a, a few guys that he got to take care of first, and, and he needs to have a a good title run of his own. He's having one, a good one, but he needs to keep, uh, you know, just keep being active, keep fighting at, at 170 and doing his thing at 170. I don't understand why uh, we're talking about moving up, things like that. And and I think with the Volkanovski and Islam fight really fucked it all up. Everyone's talking about double champ, this, double Like, no, bro, let's stay in our divisions and just fight the people in our divisions. And that's it. Like, John Jones, you know, talk a little bit about him. Like, what, Dana White has a point to beat everybody at the, the killers at light heavyweight and then do it at heavyweight. Like, that's go shit. And that's how it needs to be. Not just you become champion and you want to move up or you defend your title once and you want to move up. No, that's not how it works, man. That's just not how it works. So Islam Makachev needs to fight Armand Sorokin and uh, that would be a good ass fight, man. And for that fight, I think it's better if Islam Makachev kept it on the feet, you know, but Armand Sorokin is a very, very good wrestler and we just don't know how that fight would go. Like Islam Makachev hasn't fought a good wrestler since Armand Sorokin and that fight went to decision. Like we just know what's going to happen and that's a good ass fight and that's a fight that should happen at the end of the year and I like it, it would just be a good ass fight, man. All right. So that's really like the card itself. The last thing here I want to talk about is about Dana White talking down on Armand and kind of defending John Jones. So I, I don't, I didn't really hear the question, but it sounds like, you know, do you think our, uh, does, I mean, uh, Islam Akhachev is number one pound for pound. And he was like, as long as John Jones is still in the UFC, John Jones is going to be number one pound for pound. And he kind of went off, you know, he kind of went off a little bit saying like John Jones beat out everybody at light heavyweight and heavyweights like that's the champ. And then he took three years off and then beat the number one contender and made it look easy, like just completely went off on the reporter and defended John Jones like it was, or, you know, one of his own. So it was pretty interesting to see that reaction from Dana, like a frustration. I don't understand why he cares and defends John Jones so much. Like John Jones had, you know, his prime and he had his amazing run in the UFC. But right now, John Jones is just, he's old. And, and, and in my opinion, like, he's just not at the highest level anymore. You know, he needs to fight someone like Tommy. For me to say, like, okay, John Jones still got it. But until then, I just don't, I don't see the uh, the point of defending John Jones. And we kind of need to move on from that. And Dana White needs to move on from Do John Jones as well. Like, there's just there's nothing there. There's no more hype from John Jones. And, and like, John Jones fought Cyril Gunn, and, and where has he been since then, right? It's like, so it's just like, whatever. So I don't understand why Dana White did that, and he's just kind of talking down on Islam Magachev when he just won and defended his title against Dustin Poirier, which is kind of crazy to, like, you know, to do that. Um, and you're kind of just talking down to Islam. It felt like he was, like, kind of disrespecting Islam or kind of talking down on Islam, and I thought that was a bit shitty from Dana White to do that. 
But I don't know, man. I feel like also Dana White is a bit annoyed or frustrated with Islam Akachev. It feels like the relationship is not the best. I just get that vibe. And, um, like, there's just things that, like, he said in that press conference that, you know, we don't need to move up or this and that. Like, you know, he need, he needs to fight our monster rookie, and that's a fight to make sense. Like, really kind of taking shots at uh, Islam Akachev for some reason. And, uh, I like I said, I think he has, uh, like, some frustration towards Islam or or something right like they're they know why i don't think he's too happy with islam Agachev. so i'm curious you know what the relationship's like and things like that but uh guys i think that's uh pretty much the episode we also had boxing uh this past weekend but i mean um it was a you know nothing nothing uh i was interested but like i said casually watching the wilder and zane fight i didn't wasn't really paying too too much attention so that was good i'm not really sure what's going down this weekend uh let me see actually um sorry guys boxing schedule i know we don't have ufc because i think the next one we get is on on the 20th 29th right for uh for uh what is it called uh damn what is it called bro the the conor mcgregor return my bad conor mcgregor and chandler so damn we don't got nothing going on this weekend either that's crazy next weekend we got javante davis and uh frank martin i think yeah frank martin and then uh let's see let's see fight night on the june 8th oh we got jared carnier versus aminovov i don't know how to say the name dominic reyes raul rosas okay i'll watch ufc fight night i'll probably make a youtube video but uh that'll just be like more like really really watching but these fights look pretty decent um at least the, the the last three ones do. Yeah, yeah. I'll make a little video, a YouTube video, but nothing too crazy. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much the episode. Pretty short. I hope you guys enjoyed UFC. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. And guys, I just wanted to say one more thing. I don't care to be right. I don't care to be wrong. And uh, if you guys laugh or are happy that I'm wrong, that's cool. Like I said, I make this content for fun, to be entertaining, and just to have a good-ass time. And, and just be a vibe, bro. Like, I don't... I like to watch fights and just talk like, man, he should have done this. He should have done that. This guy could beat him. Like, how would this person fight? How would this fight look when, if he fought this person? Like, you know, bro, like, it's just all that. It's not like I got to be right or ha, 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 you were wrong. Like, you know, if I was wrong, like, okay. You know, after the Islam Makachev did that, I was, like, literally just, like, laughing and smiling because how badass that shit was, man. And, of course, it breaks my heart, Dustin. And I was, like, even emotional that we're going into the fifth round because I'm like, oh, my gosh, Dustin Poirier can fucking do it. And then Islam Akachev just does that. I'm just like, wow, just blown away, bro, like, by greatness. And and I appreciate that shit. And I, I'm never going to hit on anybody like that, like that. And I know I hit on Islam, but I respect Islam. I understand he's a champ. And, and I just want more from Islam at 155. And that's why I give him a hard time. But just want to let you guys, you know, like, don't hate on nobody. Don't, don't, um... And don't celebrate anybody's losses like that. Like, there's no reason if you see something on, like, you know, ah, oh, your team, like, this team lost, ha, 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 ha. Like, especially if you got nothing to do with that. Like, let's say you don't even watch UFC like that. We don't even watch, like, this sport like that. Like, that's just weird. So, I I'm just trying to have a good time, have fun. And uh, if you're not about that, like, just, just watch and don't really, yeah, whatever, guys. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys later this week. Peace.